Hey there, Rachel Sherman here, and if you've made it to this video, you're probably one of my students working on your SAT project. And if not, I hope you find this just as informative. I'm going to teach you a little bit about using Excel to crunch some numbers for data and processing and other kinds of things through this series. So a little bit of background. As you know, this project requires you to collect some type of data, minimum of 50 pieces, ideally population data, and then apply it and apply different techniques and statistics to learning more about it and basically what's kind of like the big picture that we can figure out. So what I've done here, and this is based off of a great conversation that we had in our classroom, is go ahead and I've looked up data relating to physical inactivity in adults from 2019. So long term, what I want to do is think of a topic that has something you can compare it to. So what we know about the US without doing any research at all is that obesity is quite frankly an epidemic and you don't even need to know the numbers to realize that there has been a severe increase in obesity which has stemmed from a lot of things but we also know that one of the major factors in obesity is physical inactivity so if we were to analyze the physical inactivity of adults over the last however many years Theoretically, we'll probably find that there's been a decrease in physical in, decrease in physical activity, which means increase in an inactivity. So what I've done is I gathered some data, which I found here on this website. Specifically, this is from America's Health Rankings, the United Health Foundation. And being that it has all 50 states, including Washington, D.C., I've gone and entered all of that information into the Excel spreadsheet. If you're one of my students and you have the template that we're working from. So everything that we're going to be doing is going to be related to this data set. Now, because they gave us percentages of that population, this is going to be converted over to amount of people per capita, which is going to allow us to analyze this in, in a little bit different of a way. So instead of us just looking at the rate of inactivity, we're looking at this as, for example, in Colorado, 16.4 out of every 100 adults are physically inactive within the last 30 days outside of their regular job duties. So if you have a physical job, it's something that you're, let's say, you know, working with your hands all day outside, um, or even teachers, right, you're moving around quite frequently, we're talking about exercise in addition to what you do to get moving and be physical in your day-to-day -day job. Okay. So let's take a look. I've already gone ahead and entered all of the data here, and you'll see that I've got it listed out on the left-hand side of the chart. And one thing I'm going to be teaching you here is some of the basics with Excel, and each video in this series is going to progress a little bit further. So if you're my student and you're working through this project just as you see it, make sure you're putting a lot of time and pausing as you work to fill in these boxes. The boxes are prompting you with questions and other things that you should be thinking about that are only going to further your understanding of data analysis. So you'll see that the first box here, I've asked why is this going to be a good fit for a data analysis? So I gave a couple of very specific reasons, including the obesity epidemic in the US at an all-time high, and then of course with COVID-19 currently being in th the peak of its pandemic here in the US while this video is being recorded, I was curious how physical inactivity will change this year, probably even more than ever before. So a follow-up to this project, maybe a year or two from now, I can look back and see how the inactivity rates might have changed during this pandemic and of course other things. I've also included a source to where the data is from. And as noted here, if you are one of my students and you've collected this data on your own, then just include a link to the survey data and kind of what questions you ask so I have an idea of that. So let's go ahead and get into the project itself and kind of the computation. So you'll notice that this template's set up in a way to help you walk through from basic to slightly more advanced techniques. The first prompt here is the data population or sample. Now, it could vary depending on what kind of information you have, but for us, being that we have all of the data across the US, including DC, I'm gonna say that this is to be considered as a population. 
Now, if you have other US territories, you're also welcome to include those. And frankly, I don't want you, when you're thinking about data to choose, to feel like you have to pick something which is state by state just because it sounds easy. You can be dealing with population data on a much larger scale. Some populations may have two or 300 things in them that include all two or 300 things. Not everything we do is gonna be broken down by state. It could be something that's broken down by city. Uh, I mean, it could even be something that's just across the state of Delaware where you're looking at maybe 100 different businesses or agencies. There are so many different routes you can take with this project. This is just going to be one example, one set of data to help teach you how to go about the different pieces that we're going to use here. Now, in calculating the mean using Excel, you're going to use the average function. And a little bit of background if you're taking this course with me. At some point, you've already learned the very fundamentals, so we're going to go through this part. Remember that equals always sets Excel up for a formula. And the mean is going to be calculated using the average function. Go ahead and highlight your data. At the end of this, you're going to close that off and hit enter. For standard deviation, the reason you were asked before if it was population or sample is because when you start typing standard deviation, you have quite a few options. You can click around to see what each of them means. If it's population, we're using the one with the P at the end. And same thing, you're going to highlight your data and hit enter. So you can see already that we have a mean of about approximately 24, specifically 24 adults per 100 are physically inactive in the US, and a standard deviation of 3.8, which if we're curious, OK, well, is that good? Is that bad? This is where coefficient of variation can come in handy. Recall that coefficient of variation is always standard deviation divided by the mean, and then you convert it to a percentage. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that cell and turn it to a percent. The other option that you have here is you could always multiply it by 100 within the cell just to convert it over. It's up to you. Coefficient of variation of about 16%. That's not terrible. It's not the best in the world, but the consistency is, is pretty good, which if you look at the data, most of it is pretty close together. There is, there is you know, some reasonable range, but most of the data is pretty close together. We would hope almost that there would be some on the lower end so we could look to them to find out what those states are doing to help increase physical activity. But, you know, at this point, let's just see where this goes. So before moving on to your organized data, make sure you pause, kind of make some observations about the data itself. And you'll see here that I've asked you to make observation about, uh, observations about the data in its unorganized and unprocessed form. So talk about levels of measurements, anything that you notice that you think is trending. So for example, are there any outliers that seem blatantly obvious? You would talk about that there. Levels of measurement, is this nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? So again, something like this, when you're talking about the amount of people who fit the criteria of physical inactivity, this would be a ratio level of data. So I would take this time, and I'd go ahead and fill in this box here with that kind of information. So now having only collected this data and made a few observations up here, write at least three questions that you have and what you hope to be able to answer by the time we're done. So this is completely open-ended. The questions can be very simple. They might even be very involved. So I might be curious to know how extreme, so maybe one of my questions is, how extreme of a drop has there been in physical activity in the US over the years? Right? Maybe I'm curious, was there a noticeable change from 2000 to 2020? Or maybe I'm even curious to go back to 1950 to see what the differences have been. And maybe another question that I can hope to answer, and this might require some outside research, is something to the effects of, has the increase of technology being available caused or impacted the level of activity 
of people in the U.S. And then, of course, any other questions you have here, you can go ahead and fill them in. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how you go about organizing your data, and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.